Hello, I'm Josie Couture. Welcome to Josie Couture Real Estate TV, your real estate home and garden channel. With all the condo construction in Toronto and the high prices of properties, more and more buyers are considering pre-construction purchases. Buyers often have questions about pre-construction purchases that they would like answered by someone else than the developer. So this month, I've invited lawyer Michael Clark, partner with Corman and Company, to answer some of the questions that buyers have about pre-construction. So Michael, welcome and thank you for joining us today to answer these questions. Well, so, thanks very much for having me. Yeah, thank you. And, and let me ask you what the first question I often hear from buyers, mm -hmm. what are the risks associated of buying a pre-construction property? Okay, so uh, the thing you have to keep in mind with purchasing new construction is that the building often isn't finished yet, or it may still be a hole in the ground or not even a hole in the ground yet. So as a buyer, you're subject to all of the vagaries of the construction process. The builder doesn't know exactly when they're going to be able to finish the building. They don't know exactly that they're going to be able to get the windows on time. They don't know exactly that they might be able to get concrete on time, things like this. So you just have to put up with those sorts of potential delays and changes. But also, um, you know, if you saw particular fixtures in the showroom, maybe those things are out of stock by the time the builder goes to put them into your unit, so you have to choose new things. Maybe uh, there are construction delays, like I said, from a strike from drywallers, for example. Um, maybe the builder changes the price a little bit on you due to adjustments that are allowed for in the contract. More on that in a minute. Uh, and then there's also the possibility that the builder could terminate the transaction because they couldn't get their own mortgage or because maybe they didn't sell all the units in the building. So there's lots of things that you would need to take so into account. So lots of unforeseen changes. Yeah. So Michael, how does the developer figure out the condo fees on a pre-construction building? Right, good question. Uh, it's more or less the same as the way a finished condo would figure out their condo fees. So they have to do a budget, and the budget covers all of the expenses of uh, maintaining the building uh, year to year. And they then take the bottom line of that budget, and they divide it by each unit's percentage ownership of the overall building. And so that way, people who have a bigger unit pay a little bit more money than people who have smaller units. It's just based on your proportional pro rata interest in the whole development. And how often do the fees increase under pre-construction? Realistically, once the building is registered, once each person takes final ownership of the, their unit, uh, you will have annual budgets. Generally, buildings will increase condo fees annually. They're allowed to do it more frequently than that, but it's rare. Like a resale? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And people often ask about occupancy fees and what is occupancy. Can right. you explain that? Sure. So occupancy, I just think to yourself of how the building is constructed. They start at the bottom, they go to the top. If it's just a short little building, they can get the whole thing up almost at the same time. But with these tall towers in downtown Toronto, for example, uh, the bottom floors are going to be finished long before the top. And the builder is allowed to give occupancy to the people on the bottom floors before the building is finished. So when you get your keys and you can move in, this is called the occupancy period. It ends when you get final title to your unit on final closing. So there are actually two closings, one when you get the keys, one when you take title and get your mortgage at the end. That's when the whole building is finished. So occupancy fees are reasonably predictable. We don't know exactly what they're going to be, but all builders are required to charge three things. Interest on the outstanding balance of the purchase price, the common expenses that are estimated in the budget, so you can go to the builder's estimated budget to figure out what those are going to be, and the estimated property taxes, which are reasonably, uh, reasonably well known at the time of purchase. And those fees, they do not count towards purchase price. They're just, uh, you're paying the builder a fee to occupy your unit prior to final closing, and they are not optional. And it's not applicable towards the purchaser's mortgage? Correct. I see, okay. 
One final question that people often ask, do builders charge any extra cost on top of the purchase price? Right, the simple answer is yes. So the contract that you sign with a, build, a builder, all builders, uh, allows the builder to charge additional things on top of the purchase price on closing. And they're all listed. You might not know the exact dollar figure, but you will know that they are allowed to charge for certain items. So for example, they can charge for the Tarion enrollment uh, fee. This is for your Tarion new home warranty. They can charge for park levies and development charges. Uh, future realty taxes, your property taxes, uh, things like utility hookup charges, things of that nature. They can pass all those costs on to the buyer. So what's really critical for a buyer to understand is that you can go in and you can ask a builder to provide a cap, so a maximum, for those different charges. So at least, even though you don't know the specific dollar amount that you're going to have to pay, you'll know an outside amount so that you can plan your finances accordingly. They could be expensive, they could be ten to fifteen thousand dollars, so it's very much worth planning ahead for these sorts of things. Asking for a cap, that's a really good tip. Thank you so much, Michael. Thank you for being with us today and thank you very much for coming and sharing these thoughts with us. No problem, it's my pleasure. Although there is some uncertainty about buying a pre-construction property, there's also a silver lining. You get to spread the down payment, you get to move to a brand new place, and most of the time you can also use your realtor to represent you for the pre-construction purchase. For more information about this topic, Toronto real estate or neighborhoods, or to buy or sell a property, I'm just a click or a call away. We hope that you enjoyed this month's video. To follow along with us, please click subscribe at the end of our video. And if you like our video, please click like and share. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next month.